So I'll keep it simple, you know, uh, and many of you have heard this pitch, so I don't want to sound repetitive also. Uh, I'll probably rely less on the charts and, uh, you know, more on interaction and, and uh, you know, general chat. So, you know, if, if you look at aerospace and defense in India, and, uh, you know, you look at where we stand in the global context, does anyone want to take a guess on uh, What's the total market size of, uh, let's say, aerospace manufacturing and MRO in the world? Uh, anybody wants to take a guess? And uh, so I can give those numbers to you. So this is about $838 billion. Uh, so it's a big, big market. And this is just, uh, you know, uh, civil aviation side, uh, aircraft manufacturing, MRO and those kind of things. And um, anybody want to guess uh, what's the share of India in that market? It's very, very small. It's uh, it's a little over 1%. It's about 1.5%. Uh, you can imagine, you know, uh, we have a long way to go, but it's, it can be a good thing also, you know, so you have a huge market to capture and for people who are here from aerospace manufacturing side, uh, something that you can look forward to. Um, on the defense side, um, India has a substantial budget. We have about $50 billion worth of budget. We are among the top five defense spending countries in the world so we are big there also we are we are going to be probably the third uh, in, in a few years just behind US and uh, China um, we, we are already ahead of Saudi Arabia and Russia by the way so for people who are here for this show which is aero def which is uh, in my understanding uh, people who are interested in aerospace manufacturing defense manufacturing and, and you know allied areas huge opportunity for us now when you look at um, you know all these big numbers and you realize that our India share is much less and you start thinking about uh, what could be the reasons why uh, you know we are not there yet 19 percent year-on-year growth for several years why is it that we are still lagging behind so one is you know obviously the developed countries are ahead of us and uh, uh, you know uh, a number of other reasons uh, but one big reason we need to work on is uh, having adequate number of skilled talent in the country. This is one area which is uh, close to us. Uh, so as part of UTC and Pratt and & Whitney, we are, uh, we are very keen to see how we can support skill development in the country. Um, and if I may have my presentation back, everybody would be familiar with UTC, but just in case people who, some of you who are not familiar with UTC, we are one of the world's largest aerospace companies about 60 billion in size. I come from the aircraft engines division, which is called as Pratt & Whitney, which is about uh, 16 billion dollar unit of uh, UTC. And uh, we make money by making aircraft engines and maintaining them. So it's, it's actually quite simple, right? But the reason I'm here is not for uh, talking to you about, you know, aircraft engine manufacturing and maintenance and so on, but, you know, more, uh, more about what we are doing in India on uh, skill development. So, you know, I go around um, and, and try and meet people in the field. Uh, I, I do this uh, quite often. I, I like to do that because only when I understand my customers uh, will I be able to, you know, come up with solutions that meet the customer's needs. So when I uh, go out and talk to companies that are either already into aerospace manufacturing or are looking to get into aerospace manufacturing, and as you know, India has made a good name for itself in uh, automotive manufacturing. So there are a number of suppliers who are into automotive manufacturing that are looking to get into aerospace manufacturing. Um, and, you know, try and understand from them what are their pain points and, uh, you know, how can we help. And, um, you know, so some of the things I would like to share with you. So, you know, one of the things I hear very often is, well, you know, the nature of the aerospace industry is such that, you know, they've never had a chance to really appreciate uh, what an aircraft um, uh, engine, for example, looks like or what the rest of the aircraft looks like. A lot of these uh, companies that are into aerospace manufacturing are very small MSMEs. So they don't, they've either not had an opportunity to learn about uh, some of these technologies or, uh, you know, and, and even if, even for companies that are already, uh, you know, maybe doing small uh, bits and pieces, you know, small parts manufacturing and so on, uh, because of the nature of the industry, um, the OEMs and, and uh, you know, we also come in that same bracket, our restrictions don't allow us to share much more than what we are actually awarding to that particular MSME, which means if an MSME is actually manufacturing a small component, all we can share with you is just maybe the design um, of that particular component. Now, what that results in is, um, you know, that particular MSME and their engineering team are actually just aware about that particular component. They've never had an opportunity 
to look at where that component actually fits in the big picture. You know, so if you can, if for those of you who have seen an actual aircraft engine, you know, you would, uh, you would realize that, you know, the, the small components that we manufacture in India are, are actually very, very small part of the big puzzle. If we can create an opportunity for them to, you know, uh, come, up, come over to our facility and uh, look at uh, what an actual engine looks like, uh, that can actually uh, be, be very beneficial. So, uh, you know, how does it help? It, they get to know where their component fits in the larger uh, engine, if you will. They also realize that uh, if they are manufacturing, let's say, a, a very simple component and they think that that's all that they have capability for, when they look at the full engine, they realize, oh, geez, you know, I can make with the same level of capability that I have today, I can make 10 other things on this engine. And oh, by the way, if I uh, expand my capability a little bit more and we can help with them uh, with that in, in many ways then they can do 10 other things on the engine. And, uh, and this is how we uh, realize that there is a need for uh, industry focused course uh, where we can bring in people from uh, these uh, small MSMEs and train them on what, uh, you know, on, on uh, you know, a whole host of things. That includes, um, you know, a general introduction about the aircraft engines, how engines work, um, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, even the insides of the engine, we can do boroscope uh, uh, based uh, uh, training uh, that, that allows them to look insides of the engine and uh, also deploy some of the uh, technologies which I'm going to talk about in uh, subsequent charts, uh, which are actually industry 4.0 um, and, 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 and uh, that's how we are also trying to, uh, you know, innovate and stay ahead of the curve on uh, the skill development and learning side. So, uh, if you can go back to the previous chart, um, so customer training is uh, a very old function inside Pratt & Whitney. It's existed for almost 80 years uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, three primary locations. Uh, the primary location, uh, you know, is uh, East Hartford, Connecticut, where our headquarters is for Pratt & Whitney. And uh, the second location is in China and the third one, the newest one we've opened is in Hyderabad in your city. And, um, you know, we began operations about two years ago. This is an operation which is uh, certified by regulators. Uh, as you know, aviation is a very regulated industry. You can't just set up a training center, uh, you know, overnight. You have to have the right approvals in place. So we have approvals from EASA, we have approvals from DGCA. Uh, and our primary uh, reason for setting this up was actually to provide training on aircraft engines to airlines who uh, buy our engines in the region. Uh, so we support customers all the way uh, from uh, from India and the neighboring countries to uh, entire Middle East, South Asia, and we also get uh, customers from up north, you know, Russia and, and Japan and so on. So we are doing a lot of trainings. Uh, we've done almost 5,000 student days. Uh, but what's more interesting for this particular crowd is, uh, you know, the training program that we've come up for the MSMEs, and, and that's the program I was talking to you about. And these are uh, just some pictures and, and this is a very simple presentation for me guys. You know, I, I want to keep it simple and see how we can uh, make it more, uh, uh, more useful for you uh, from the presence that we have here. So these are some of the pictures you can see, uh, you know, the reason we chose Hyderabad was uh, Hyderabad is, uh, you know, is, is uniquely located. Uh, if you see there are two circles around uh, uh, that map. Uh, the inner circle is all the countries that you can actually reach within two hours of flying time. And, uh, and, and, and then uh, the outer circle is, uh, you know, uh, countries and, and locations that you can reach in uh, about five hours. Uh, that includes uh, two of the major aviation hubs. One is uh, the Singapore hub and the other one is, uh, uh, you know, the Middle East, uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi hub. So this one, I, I'll just spend, uh, you know, maybe a few, uh, you know, a little bit uh, talking about this one. So we uh, realized that, uh, you know, in countries like India, for example, uh, we have limited resources. Uh, one of the challenges, uh, for example, for uh, these companies that are into aerospace manufacturing is uh, finding talent. So we are also doing a lot of work with universities. You know, as, as many of you would be aware, universities, uh, especially those that are running aerospace programs, are facing a lot of difficulties these days, especially in Hyderabad. Many of the universities are actually cutting down um, uh, on uh, aerospace courses uh, because they are not able to find enough students. Uh, and this is a unique situation. So we've been uh, deliberating uh, this at the national level. I am also uh, part of of the US India Aviation Cooperation Program uh, Skills Development Committee. That's a committee I chair myself. And uh, so we discuss this extensively within those committees. And, uh, you know, among the companies uh, to just uh, think and uh, explore ways on how we can 
improve the university level um, education on uh, aerospace technologies and how uh, companies like UTC, uh, you know, GE and others, uh, you know, are, are uh, uh, you know, friends from uh, the other uh, American companies, how we can help, you know, uh, in, in improving the level of uh, aviation skill development in India. And, uh, you know, we also went and, uh, and talked to a number of universities and uh, tried to understand what they are looking at and where their challenges are and uh, try and address those also uh, to whatever extent we can and um, you know in that regard what we heard from a number of universities was that they don't have enough resources to be able to provide the trainings to their students because uh, this is a country where we have limited resources not all colleges can um, uh, spend the money required to uh, you know uh, buy expensive training assets engines or whatever else and um, this is where we said, okay, you know, let's explore virtual reality. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with virtual reality here, but, uh, you know, for those of you who are not, uh, this is uh, really, you know, um, uh, you know, one of the technologies, very innovative and very uh, interesting, where if you can put a headset on your eyes, uh, you can um, virtually be transported to a different world. And in our case, what we do is uh, we, we come up with virtual reality-based uh, training tools where, uh, you know, even if you don't have an engine, uh, you know, around, you can actually go inside the engine and walk around. And if you have students, you can train them and show them the different parts of the engine and how things work. Uh, we have solutions based on those and uh, we are actually deploying these. These days when uh, we get requests from uh, some remote university and we do a lot of training for remote universities, you know, for example, universities in Gujarat, uh, universities in Tamil Nadu and in other states of India, we work with a number of state governments and you know they, they reach out to us to support skill development programs in their state and uh, so we use these kind of virtual reality tools i wanted to just share uh, that uh, with this particular crowd so you understand and appreciate how uh, industry 4.0 is actually coming into uh, the training world also so uh, this is this is very useful i mean uh, you know if you are trying to teach a complex topic in um, aircraft propulsion without having the access to hardware it can be very very difficult and that's where these kind of tools come in handy this is um, another uh, interesting uh, uh, tool that we are actually already uh, using um, and and uh, you know this uh, this this helps us in many ways and uh, you know if you uh, look at the picture itself it is self-evident uh, what is happening here is if you have a technician in the field uh, having a problem and uh, obviously all our technicians on the field they may not be able to immediately um, you know get a sense of what the problem is and uh, you know they would need help from the headquarters uh, we have this uh, remote troubleshooting tool uh, and just using a simple mobile phone you can actually put it in front of the engine and uh, you know this is and, and this is constantly being uh, you know uh, upgraded uh, but today what we can actually do is you know remotely be able to demonstrate to the technician uh, or the expert back in the headquarters on uh, where specifically which particular part is causing trouble and uh, the person you know sitting remotely uh, can actually play around with this a little bit and uh, you know he can provide instructions to the person on the ground and all this is happening you know in a very secure way because you know we, we definitely want to make make sure that uh, uh, you know whatever you know, remote troubleshooting that we are doing we are using a medium which is secure uh, because in aviation security uh, is very important data security is very important so this is uh, another example i just wanted to use and uh, you know throw it out to you for those of you who are not uh, from the aircraft uh, maintenance uh, background that you know there are tools and technologies which are already being used um, and uh, you know we are trying to innovate all the time and coming up with the newer solutions if you can go uh, further ahead i just wanted to share some pictures you know this msme program we have already launched uh, a few weeks ago and uh, we've had a tremendous response uh, in fact uh, you know we we have to refuse uh, people uh, you know uh, because just as soon as we launch a batch it's like full and uh, so you know we are at a situation where we are not able to accommodate people uh, which is a great thing because uh, you know it, it means that we are trying to do something that is uh, very much required by the industry and uh, you know uh, we want to continue to do it uh, maybe do more um, and uh, you know there are a few more charts if you can quickly flip through those um, so you know this is uh, 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 these are pictures of uh, some of the 
uh, programs we are doing with some of the universities across the country. We are tied up with uh, almost uh, five state governments uh, and uh, in many cases, you know, uh, the governments are actually uh, funding their universities to send uh, students to us to get trained in the, uh, you know, uh, skill, uh, you know, uh, aerospace propulsion technologies and, and in general, you know, across uh, uh, aerospace technologies. We also cover, uh, you know, aviation regulations and uh, uh, some of the other uh, newer topics we keep on uh, adding to our syllabus. In fact, uh, now we are coming up with uh, a six-week program very shortly where we will be able to uh, bring in students and they can spend six weeks uh, in our training center and uh, you know learn about uh, a whole host of things and uh, so we, we are uh, doing a lot of work on Skill India I want to just uh, you know uh, close by saying that uh, UTC and Pratt and & Whitney we are very supportive of the government of India uh, Make in India initiative uh, and, and by supporting the MSMEs uh, our, our MSMEs in India we are trying to uh, do our bit uh, on Make in India and obviously on the Skill India we are already working with a number of universities uh, to, to uh, be able to provide programs uh, that help develop, uh, develop skill talent in the country Thank you.